Okay, we're going to start uh, the meeting of the Transportation Planning Policy Committee, and we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Everyone here. Night, America. Thank you. Roll call, please. Jose de Rola? Here. Pete Smith? I'm here. Lucinovich? Pete Lucinovich? Ray Paleo? Here. Stephen McFarland. Mike Mallard. Here. Silver Alvarado. Cryer. Here. Keith Smith. Bill Smith, Roberto Reyna. I'm here. David Couch, Jack Stricker. I'm here. Kirsty. Here. May Alcala. Michael Navarro. Here. Cindy Park. I am here. Thank you. Very good. We have a quorum. Okay, we have a quorum. <coughs> Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the council on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the council. Council members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to council at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record prior to making a presentation. Are there any public on the phone? I see no public here. Any correspondence? No? Okay, thank you. Uh, consent agenda. Opportunity for public comment. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non controversial by Kerncog staff and will be approved by one motion of no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions of comment or discussion desired by anyone. The item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council concerning that before action is taken. Does anyone want to remove a consent agenda item? And then can I have a motion? Crump, make a motion to approve. Motion by Crump. I'll second it. This is Raina. Second by Raina. Roll call vote. Trump? Aye. Lee Smith? Yes. Grace Galeo? Aye. Mike Mauer? Yes. Russell Pryor? Yes. Roberto Reina? Yes. Max Ribner? Aye. Percy? Yes. Alcala? Yes. And the bar. That's right, Yes. Yes. Thank you. Oops, Thank you. Item five public hearing on that transit needs in Kern County, Mr. Snotty. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee.
current council of governments annually holds a public hearing to identify any unmet transit needs and those that are reasonable to me. And this is the last of 10 public hearings held this year throughout the county. The uh, Social Services Transportation Advisory Committee has reviewed input on this Prior to making any allocation from the Transportation Development Act, CDA funds, to uses other than public transit or pedestrian bikeway facilities, current cog is legally required under California Public Utilities Code Section 99401.5 to determine whether unmet transit needs have been identified within its jurisdiction. Through newspaper advertisements, members of the public were requested to provide their input. Public input was also obtained through public hearings held in the cities, rural communities of Kern, Golden Fire Transit District, and the City of Delano. Kerncog Social Services Transportation Advisory Committee, or SSTAC, reviewed the results of these public hearings. Kern Transit held its public hearing on uh, July 28, 2020. The Kern County Board of Supervisors found that there are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet. The cities of Arvin, California City, McFarland, Ridgecrest, Shatter, Taft, Tehachapi, and Wasco held up these public hearings between February and August 2020. None of these cities reported unmet transit needs that were reasonable to meet. At its October 2nd, 2020 meeting, the Social Services Transportation Advisory Committee, SSTAC, reviewed a countywide analysis of unmet transit needs provided by current Cog staff and the members of the SS Tech determined that there are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet within Kern County. I have looked at all of my uh, emails since we advertised for this meeting and I've also uh, been into the office several times to record all of my uh, telephone messages and I have received no uh, unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet or any uh, response to our unmet transit needs. Tonight is the public hearing for 2021 climate transit needs assessment and determination at which time the current uh, board should decide the resolution one of the following. There are no unmet transit needs, or there are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet, or there are unmet transit needs including those that are reasonable to meet. We recommend that you open up public hearing, receive comments, and close the public hearing. At this time, if we do receive a, a public comment or a comment from anyone, uh, we will record it. And before we uh, pass the resolution, we will take that uh, for that unmet transit needs to the proper jurisdiction for their analysis. With that, I advise you to open the public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Snyder. Public hearing is open for comments on unmet transit needs. Seeing none, hearing none, I will close the public hearing and ask for a motion to find that there are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet in Kern County. So moved, Grace Vallejo. Second, Mike Maurer. We'll call vote, please. Hi. I'm hearing nothing but a lot of static. not speaking. Green static.
Yes. Yes. Hey, I, I didn't get Okay. Yeah, thank you. Kirsty? Yes. 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 Uh, good, good evening, Chair. Thank you. This is Michael Navarro. Um, apologizing for a lot of background noise. Um, before I go on the report, just some opening remarks. I just want to give you a reminder that the California Transportation Plan is wrapping up its 60-day review. Um, the last day to provide comments will be October 22nd. If you wish to comment, we encourage you to do so. Um, hopefully by next month, we're anticipating a call for project for our sustainable transportation planning grants. Hopefully by next month, so what we'll be doing is, is once we get a hard fast day, we'll be starting to look into holding some virtual events to reach out to a uh, engage your respective agencies so we'll be reaching out accordingly um as for projects uh, cash creek bridge replacement which is on state route 58 east of tehachapi uh, the work schedule for october includes pouring concrete barriers grade and treatment pad install tubular rail grind the bridge deck install guardrail and start prepping for the median work uh, the schedule anticipate completion date is an end of november of this year state route 58 closure Rehab project, the 3R project at Bakersfield from State Route 5899, separation to Cottonwood Road. Um, in the westbound direction, there'll be some rebar replacement and CRCP work. Uh, the two lanes will be open for traffic. However, expect nighttime closures to occur. Uh, same work going on in the eastbound direction. And same story there, two lanes will be open traffic. You know, however, we expect nighttime closures along this stretch. I anticipate uh, completion date for this project will be March of 2021. Uh, Bell Terrace overcrossing is to stay route 58 between Bell Terrace and Brundage. The auxiliary lane and, and bridge replace, replace the bridge. Uh, currently scheduled for completion is end of February of 2021. Uh, the Bakersfield Freeway Connector Project was modifying the 5899 interchange. Uh, work is progressing this project. And most of the work continues to be structure work. Completion date is for December of 2021. And the Stair 99 to our fast freight corridor project, I-5 to US-99. Uh, stage eight work is in progress from the I-5 overcrossing to just north of David Copas on-ramp. Traffic is split into lane one and three while work is being completed behind K-Rail. This project is about 60% complete and we anticipate uh, being complete in summer of 2021. Uh, the Bakersfield 99 rehab between Palm Avenue overcrossing and Beardley Canal Bridge project is ongoing. Northbound traffic has shifted the outside lanes and work is on lowering the freeway under Minklers for overhead and airport drive overcrossing. Estimated completion date for this project is August of 2021. The Bay Route 223 Derby signal project. Uh, first part is look on the east side of town. This project is being ready for advertisement. We're waiting for federal approval for the h -SHIP funding. Uh, expect the project to advertise end of October. Open bids in December with project approval for construction February of 2021. Wasco Cap M project, striping operations underway for this project. Uh, this will include the crosswalk, crosswalk at Poplar. And as I indicated last month, we expect the RFB to be installed to probably end of November with this project wrapping up uh, by the end of this calendar year. Uh, lastly, the Lost Hills Rehab Project, this is on I-5, we're rehabbing about five miles of pavement along I-5, south of Twistleman to King County Line. So this project, we're getting ready to have a construction kickoff meeting and it was recently awarded to Pappage Construction. Uh, the last one thing I wanted to bring up in the city of Bakersfield is I know there's been some, current, some concerns expressed about uh, State Route 119, the 23rd and 24th Street intersection. I know our signal and traffic operation folks have continued to coordinate with the city of Bakersfield staff. And I think they recently had some turnover where an individual retired, uh, but we've engaged with a new person and they've made some modifications, the timing out there in the past couple of weeks that they hope to improve the efficiencies. So um, any feedback on that um, as you drive that area within the city of Bakersfield, um, feel free to share, but they did adjust some of the signal timing and work with the coordination. So hopefully you'll start to see that situation improve as we go forward. 
Oh, with that, that completes my report for District 6, and I'll go ahead and hand it over to today for District 9, if that pleases the Chair. Thank you. Any questions from members for Caltrans? This is Raina. I, I, I have uh, something to bring up uh, to David. Oh, Michael, excuse me. Uh, Michael, uh, is a project in Wasco was uh, taking place. Uh, the Caltrans uh, put on some barricades to direct traffic and um, it resulted, this barricade resulted in some confusion uh, uh, to our drivers or anybody that was passing through that area uh, in which uh, at the underpass, uh, it's one lane and uh, frequently two cars found themselves, uh, you know, next to each other where there should be only a one lane two cars were trying to get through. So just something for the future that, you know, we need to uh, be careful about that and that we uh, direct traffic in a better way. This occurred, I did not see it myself, but it, brought, it was brought up to my attention. So I just wanted to bring it to your attention. That's it. Thank, Thank you, you Kelsman. Thank you, Councilman Reyna. You said, you said it in Wasco, you said in the undercrossing. What location was it at? Uh, the the uh, uh, Highway 46 at F Street. That's just that before you go uh, to the under, uh, underpass. Uh, and um, it just made it difficult. Uh, drivers uh, were finding themselves fighting for position uh, because of the way the traffic was directed. Thank you for that, Councilman. I'll reach out to the RE on the job and um, express your concerns. Thank you for that. Thank you. Any other comments? I have one. This is Chairman Smith. Uh, we had a we have a bike path project in City Bakersfield, and uh, we, we found it to be categorically exempt. It's CMAC funded, and, and Caltrans was still requiring environmental work. And so I would request that categorically exempt means categorically exempt, and we not take time and money on environmental stuff with Caltrans. Uh, could you expand on that, perhaps, Mr. McKean? This is the, so I think I lost in the first part. The, the project is, what was the project you said, sir? Uh, Michael, this is, this is Aaron. It's, it's the Stockdale Ranch. Uh, I path it's going over existing crossings. Clearly a, a categorically excluded project under, uh, under NUSA. Yet lo lo local assistance is asking for um, several studies. Uh, this is the issue that, that I talked to you about, um, not just on this project, but it, it affects all of our cities. It affects the project is excluded uh, by federal law. Exactly that. Uh, and I shared with you my comments uh, that I made to the Federal Highway Administration and to Caltrans headquarters. And we, we appreciate it being revisited. I've asked uh, uh, the Caltrans District Director, Diana, to set up a meeting with the uh, statewide director who came from another state and understands how other states choose not to do this work. Caltrans chooses to do this work. And in, in my opinion, it is not a, um, not a correct use of federal funds doing work that is not required under federal law. So, thank you for that clarification, Aaron. Aaron's correct. He, he has brought this up on multiple occasions, expressed concerns in Kern County on these projects that are seemingly seem to be CEs and, and I'll say slam dunk projects for lack of a better term. And, and and he's right. I think this is an issue, unfortunately, that I personally can't address. And it seems like we're it's a conversation where it's got to be elevated by my director and having conversations with with headquarters environmental staff, because I know that my environmental reviewers kind of feel the hands are kind of tied because he's kind of obligated to basically comply with a checklist. I know that doesn't fix things for you, but um, this is a topic that Aaron has obviously, obviously daylighted with us and we have had discussion inter internally. So I, I think I, the best thing I can probably give you right now, and I apologize, it's kind of like a work in progress. Um, I apologize, I don't have a better answer for you at this particular time, but I understand the frustrations and and Aaron's articulated very clearly to us. So it, it is something that's been daylighted. I appreciate that. I just wanted to clarify that it's not just Aaron's frustration. It's also, you know, 
our frustrations as elected officials that uh, you know we see enough abuse of environmental laws and, and it's frustrating to see Caltrans jump on board with that abuse. Under, under, understood, and, and I and I, and Aaron's made it clear it's not just his frustration. And he's speaking on behalf of of his member agencies, and and I'll, I'll be honest and I'll be transparent, like I always promise to be. But we have these same internal disputes um, amongst Caltrans and various teams internally. Maybe I shouldn't say that publicly, but I will. But um, understood. I understand where you're coming from. So thank you for that. Thank you. Executive director's report. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. District 9 Caltrans report. <laughs> Hi there. Good evening, Chair and Council members. Uh, just go over a few projects since Michael touched upon uh, CTP. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Rosamond Mojave Rehabilitation Project is starting to ratchet up. Uh, as you know, uh, may have known there was a public meeting held on October 6th. Outreach uh, has continued via multiple uh, uh, avenues, and they anticipate shoulder work beginning on November 3rd with some intermittent lane changes. And the plan is to switch the traffic to the northbound lanes around December 9th. Some other uh, minor projects, but ones that you might uh, have uh, some delays going on, so I'll mention them on 178 at Kelso Creek Valley Road to west of State Route 14. They're installing some new curve signs along the highway. So there's gonna be traffic control with up to 20 minute delays through there. On 395 at Rand Railroad, they're uh, doing a planing and repaving project at the crossing there. And so there's gonna be some one-way traffic control area through there as well. In Tehachapi on State Route 202 at various intersections along Tucker Road, there will be some traffic lane and shoulder closures at times as they do some work at the signal heads through there for utility work. And about 40 to 60 minutes they're expecting at each signal head. And then on um, uh, there's a couple of bridge maintenance projects on State Route 58. Uh, one being uh, north of Mojave, near the 58 uh, Mojave Barstow Highway exit, the other at the Mill Street overcrossing, and there will be some one-way traffic control and intermittent closures through those projects. That's all I have. If I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Any member questions? I have a comment, and if you can, if that's okay with me. Certainly. Denise, thank you for your work on the issues that I brought up in the current county and the San Bernardino County. Um, you may have seen that I forwarded your response to the base commander of Edwards Air Force Base, which we got back to me earlier today directly. And we um, truly appreciate the effort of bringing out the discrepancies with the students. Thank you very much for your time. I think somebody needs to mute their phone. I can hear background talking with with your what you were saying. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. The member statements. Seeing none, we will adjourn the TPPC meeting and begin the current cog meeting. Roll call. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I forgot Aaron. Thanks. <laughs> and board members, I, I just have a handful of items on this agenda that I wanted to bring your attention to. Um, September 23rd, we had a uh, meeting for the cargo project. That, the reminder involved, involved Bakersfield, Shafter, Trent County, Caltrans, and High Speed Rail. Um, also had a follow-up meeting today with some of the engineers, and I've had several follow-up phone calls, and we are following it up with an in-person meeting on Monday with uh, Chapter Bakersfield and Kern. We are starting to get some traction on that project, and as you know, um, the state funded a phase two, which we haven't started yet. But, uh, we're starting to uh, 
so I, I may be coming back to you um, with next year's budget with a proposal to increase the amount of money we uh, spend on litter pickup both in the metropolitan area and in the, um, and in the unincorporated areas. Uh, I will tell you now we, we have the capability uh, to probably increase our spending in, in those areas by about 50 percent. But the, the uh, limiting factor may be, and I, I will work to figure that out in the next few months, um, the number of homeless crews uh, that we can put together, um, the ability of the homeless center to have uh, vehicles and equipment to do what they need uh, to do, uh, and, and their ability to travel to, to outlying areas. One of the um, one of the topics that did come up is uh, would Kern Cog be able to help out with that equipment? And my preliminary answer, which will obviously be subject to your approval, is, was was yes. We have the ability to spend that money not just on paying the, um, uh, pay, paying the salaries, which is the minimum wage of those people, but to buy them equipment if they need a new trailer, as an example, or, or a new van. There, there are many other funding sources, and uh, I will keep you up to date on, on the progress. But just a heads up that. Uh, we may be asking for next year's budget to increase the funding, and we do have, absolutely have the money to do that. Subject to uh, any of your questions, that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Mr. Hakeem? Hearing none, I will now adjourn the TTTC meeting and begin the Kern Cog meeting. Same roll call and same public comments. And seeing no public comments and hearing none, I'll move to the consent agenda. Uh, public comments, all items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non controversial by Trincog staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. Comment or discussion is desired by anyone. The item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council concerning the item before action is taken. Any public comment? Seeing none, hearing none. Any member comments or do we want to pull off anything from the consent agenda? Hearing none, can I have a motion? Council make a motion to approve. Vallejo second. Roll call vote, please. Brown? Aye. Steve Smith? Yes. Vallejo? Aye. Mike Mauer? Aye. Marshall Pryor? Yes. Roberto Rainer? Yes. Need a couch? Yes. Zach Friedman. Aye. Thank you. Okay, item number four, status of the California Van Pool Authority Galvan. Yes, Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Uh, the California Department of Transportation determined that the Kings County Area Public Transit Agency's van pool program should be replicated regionally as a means of addressing the non traditional transportation needs of California residents. On October 21st of 2011, certain public entities entered into an agreement to form a joint powers authority known as the California Van Pool Authority for Calvin. A section of the agreement had a provision um, that allowed other entities to join on a later date. Kern Club made a written request for inclusion as a member agency of Calvans on July 19, 2012. 
and the board of directors of Calvin voted unanimous, unanimously to accept her Congress member. In March 2020, Calvin's released its fiscal year 2018-19 financial audit. After review of the financial report, it for that Calvin had a significant loss and did not have enough funds to pay its expenditures. During a technical advisory committee meeting, it was discovered that Calvin had received grants from his vehicles, which they made a lease back arrangement for $1 million. According to Calvin and staff, this was necessary because funds were needed to pay the expenditures and that this type of arrangement had been done in the past to generate additional funds to operate the program. At the April Calvin board meeting, the executive director of the King County Area Public Transit Agency spoke concerning the issues outlined above and was told by the board that this was the first time the board had been informed there was a deficit and that, the pro and that prior and current executive director of Calvin had mortgage assets without board approval. Calvin's management made several bad financial decisions, including issuing over $1.6 million in debt for not approved by the board. The joint powers agreement states that the board shall not obligate the transit authority to expenditures of funds not appropriated by the legislative bodies of the member agencies or received directly from the state or federal government. Approximately 21% or $2,838,000 who made $838 annual budget associated with the other system resulting in rising rates that were more than twice the standard rates charged by the private sector. A member agency may withdraw from the transit authority by filing a transit of the law 180 days after the withdrawal. It should be noted that if Kern Cog elects to withdraw from Calvin, the services to the riders in Kern County will continue uninterrupted as a result of our withdrawal. The requested action is either one, continue as a member agency of the California Advanced School Authority, or number two, direct staff to prepare written notice to the executive director. Thank you. Thank you. Any member comments? Um, yes. I guess I'm a, li I'm a little confused on one part. If we opt out, um, are we held responsible for the debt that was incurred by the, the Calvans? Well, I guess the director or whoever um, you know, did the loan? Hello? Councilman Vallejo, uh, we, we are not responsible for any of their their debt. Um, the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention is uh, there may be a ask at a later date for us to assist with, with that debt. Uh, Council Member Crump uh, is Kern Cobb's representative uh, on Calvin, and I, I believe he has some more information. Yes, uh, this was brought to our attention, and uh, our understanding it wasn't a buyback, but there was a loan taken out by staff that wasn't brought to our attention until after the fact. And when it was brought to our attention, there were several entities that were not happy with it. And as we just said, one of the others is uh, debating on uh, leaving. And I was talking to uh, Aaron about us, you know, where we sat with it, what our responsibilities were, because I didn't want us to get caught with uh, having to pay something later. And I wanted it brought before you guys so that we could make a decision together, not me keeping quiet and then someone yelling at me later. So <laughs> that's what I have to say about it. <laughs> okay. I, I just, well, just... I just wanted to comment that I, I think they provide a great service, and uh, over the years, you know, it's, it's done good, and we've been a member since 2012, and 
I guess my feeling is, you know, maybe we have the executive director come and, and explain, you know, where they're at and where they're going, uh, and kind of feel our way through it instead of immediately dropping out. But I'm open to other comments. Ms. Leha. Yes. Um, you know, my concern, though, was there was a mention about, you know, the cost to the writers, you know, and we're responsible to ensure that, you know, the ridership doesn't have to pay an amount that it just kicks them out, you know, because of the cost. And it, in this report, it indicated that, you know, they may have to increase the rate. Now, where are we with that? You know, if we say, well, we're going to stay in and that's decided by that board, and so far there is no discussion of raising that rate. Okay, because it, it was mentioned on on this um, on the discussion section. So, what it was mentioned here, but it's never been mentioned by the board. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, over there they've sat there, they've done the rate. They uh, once a year when they do the budget, they talk about what it is, and. Uh, when they did the budget this last year, they didn't raise it, and they said they weren't going to look at raising it for the near future. It doesn't mean that next year's budget they won't uh, raise it, that they uh, didn't do it this year. But considering the fact that that um, they took action on, on this loan, and, and if they are in, in trouble in the budget, it looks to me like it's, you know, kind of like a well, foregone conclusion that We'll have well, to do that. Well, they had already taken the loan. They didn't tell us about it. We didn't find out about the loan until afterwards. Um, so, I'm a, like I said, they did it behind our backs. And so, it, you know, if they're going to do it, they're going to do it. It's just one of those things that we won't know until it comes that time. And they, they lost money the year before. Apparently, they lost money this year. That's what the loan was, to, to cover stuff up. Mr. Chairman, if, if, if the consensus tonight is is um, the board um, does not want to take any action, we would be glad to invite the executive director from Cal to come and tell us why we should stay or why should, we should leave or explain uh, in more detail what has transpired. Uh, so that certainly uh, could be an option uh, that the board Thank you. Any other member comments on this floor? This is Raina. I have a question. What benefit do we gain by uh, being part of this board? Uh, the organization Calvin lost a uh, million dollars uh, during this uh, last fiscal year 19, uh, 2019, uh, 2020. And uh, it appears that they're operating uh, without regard to, to their board. And so, what what benefit would it uh, would we gain by by being part of the board, if anything, or or, or what benefit would our residents uh, gain by us being there when uh, we don't count with them when they're not addressing issues with the board members? I agree. Well, I I agree with Chair. They do have a good service. But my concerns are what you just said about them ignoring the board. Um, they did have a group that sat there, went over the finances. They're trying to do something about it. But I still have the concerns with them ignoring the board, so I'm not sure how that's going to play out. Yeah, and apparently they also the services they provide are much more expensive uh, than uh, you would otherwise uh, they would have otherwise cost if you use somebody else. So I'm not sure what the benefit is to the residents or to us being there. Uh, but I'll leave it up to the rest of you to decide. I'll go with what the majority decides. Could you explain that comment, how, how they're much more expensive than private? What, the, the services that they provide, I read somewhere on the report, and I can't find it now that I'm looking at it. I should have highlighted it that uh, the, the cost to the, uh, the users is much more expensive. Hello? Uh, you're right. It is in there. I'm looking for it, too. <clears throat> to explain where I got the information from, it was from a, um, 
primary from, primarily from a letter that the uh, so lady from the transit authority from Kings County had had written, and she had had researched all of this, and so it, it came from her letter. So let me add on to that, Ms. Uh, Napier. So there, are, there are private companies uh, uh, that provide uh, almost identical uh, service, specifically in eastern uh, Kern County, um, so Enterprise or, or their uh, replacement. I'm not sure what the name of it uh, op operates uh, Calvin. So, so Calvin is a public agency, and they compete directly with with private companies who uh, were able to do this uh, in some cases cheaper, but not, not all cases, but are able to do it and, and make a profit. And uh, I've shared with some of you, maybe this is a case where, where uh, the private sector can, can do that better and if, if the public agency that's doing it cannot do it and uh, Taking enough money to cover their costs, uh, maybe, maybe it's time that we leave. That, that's why I bring in for to hear what you think and, and to take direction. Yeah, I, so, I, I support. I'm sorry. I, I support. You know, having to uh, to move out. And, and what Reina was talking about is the third bullet under current issues and reads approximately 21% and in dollars is 2,838,154 of the annual budget is associated with loan payments which are charged to the users of the system resulting in rising rates that are more than twice the standard rates charged by the private sector. Um, if it's going to head that way, I, I just can't see we're representing the people properly to allow the, us to stay in something that's going to end up this way, if it isn't yet. I, I would add also uh, that uh, these are uh, tax dollars. Uh, you know, this is uh, the people's money, and uh, this agency is misusing uh, the people's uh, money, in my opinion. And we have to speak for the people because that's, that's you know, right. we're here at COG and, and, and we have to stand up and speak for them because now we're made aware of what's happened. Is it agendized uh, tonight that we can take action to withdraw? Uh, yes, it's, uh, it was agendized to give you two choices, either stay in or to um, direct staff to uh, have a letter prepared to uh, give the 180 days to those, those were the two options, but if you want to table it for that meeting, we can do that as well. Well, if it's, a, if it's agendized for us to take action, and if the, the whoever it is in the private sector is able to do it less, for less, and this group is acting um, the way they are, which is in, entirely inappropriate. Then I would I would support um, withdrawing from the program. Mr. Chairman, I have a comment. Maybe you be helpful. Sure. Um, I believe if if the board votes to initiate um, separation. That if we change our mind during that six month process, we could, uh, we could, in effect, change our mind. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. In that case, um, I, can we make a motion at this time since there is action on the agenda? If you if you move to initiate the action, the uh, withdrawal, I'll second it. Okay, I make a motion uh, to direct staff to prepare the written notice, especially after. Um, Aaron just mentioned that we have that six months period. If something comes up that tells us we could move out, but for now, I, I make the motion to have the written notice for that 180 days to withdraw. Second. Okay. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Hi. Uh, this is Phil and Tehachapi. Finally got a connection. I vote yes. Thank you. Good to hear you, Phil. Thank you. I, I could hardly hear some of it, but I'm on. I'm on. Thank you. Uh, executive Director's report. Good evening again, Mr. Chairman and board members. Uh, just a few uh, short items on this agenda. Uh, there is a PTC meeting uh, next week, the 21st and 22nd. I will attend that virtually. November 4th, there is a joint PTC, CARB, uh, and Housing and Community Development meeting um, scheduled for Los Angeles, but it will most likely be uh, held online. Uh, as, as a reminder, I said uh, a few minutes ago, that that's the joint meetings that are now required under state law. That's why um, former Senator Dean Flores uh, is able to still influence some uh, transportation decisions. Uh, I also attended a um, direct director's meeting of COG directors throughout the state on September 29th. One of the hot issues um, that both um, Caltrans representatives talked about is Caltrans plans for, for 2050. The, the plan for 2050 uh, de-emphasizes investments in roads, which is something that we depend on here in, in uh, Central Valley and Eastern Kern. Um, we're not likely to be able to survive with just uh, bicycles and walking and uh, transit only in, in areas where there are no alternatives. So we, we have commented on our uh, displeasure with um, Caltrans's uh, attitude that uh, they are done investing in the state highway system. To use their, their words, the uh, state highway system is mature and it's time to uh, shift investments to, to other areas. And, and uh, we certainly disagree with that. Uh, and State Highway 46 is a great example. Um, State Highway 46 is incomplete. There are still people dying on that highway literally every year, and it hasn't changed in certain uh, portions for 60 plus years. I, I do not consider that a mature system, and I consider, I consider that an incomplete system. Uh, in your folder tonight, uh, timeline covering October, November, and December. Schedule of test persons covering December. And uh, for those of you that are interested, there are more and more roundabouts popping up um, throughout Caltrans. Economic and and uh, analysis of, of uh, subject to any of your questions, I can keep my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any questions?